Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Good morning, Bethel's family. Happy Valentine's to everyone. We want to spread the love this morning. Is that all right? Amen.
Now I've been through some things that I thought were unnecessary words.
This morning we are paying tribute to Dr. Latonya Earl. So all the songs that we're gonna sing are the songs that she sung when she was here. So I know y'all know these songs. We're gonna start off with great things. How many of you know that great things the Lord has done? We want y'all to just stand and just celebrate her life with us. Amen. Amen. All right, come on. She said, let's celebrate this morning.
you know, um, I know we're celebrating my cousin, Dr. Latanya Earl. I just could not stand here and not say anything because today is Valentine's Day. And isn't it just, co it's not coincidental that God called her home on this day. First of all, he loved her the most, right? He loved her the most. And then everybody loved her and she loved everybody. So we thank y'all for loving on her, and I just could not pass this opportunity to thank you all. Amen.
How many blessed people we have in the house? Come on, how many blessed people we have in the house? Oh God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Yes.
first of all, stand on your feet and let's thank the choir for blessing us on this day. Choir, you are so, so powerful this morning. We thank God. There's nothing wrong with your hand. You can go ahead and clap your hand. It's all right to clap your hand and celebrate that the Lord is kind today. Thank you all so very much. What a blessing. The kingdom of heaven is smiling down on this place. And it's a blessed day, family, as we continue to trust God, not with some things, but trust God with absolutely everything. It's been a journey. It is the first anniversary of the passing of Sister Dr. Tanya Earl. But not only that, we've had a lot of other soldiers went home who was very faithful to this ministry. And today is a day of pausing for a moment to remember their labor. I know Sister Verna Bradley labored in the Lord in this church, loved her church family, loved her family. I know Pastor Brian Norworthy labored in the Lord in this church, loved this family and loved this family. Uh, C.J. Lucky loved this family and loved this family. So many others who have transitioned, who labored in this body, love this church and love their family. And you know, it's good to be remembered when you cross over. And today we just want to have a moment of time where we just reflect on people you know. They don't even have to be a part of this body. People in your family. Maybe it's a mother, father, grandmother. Maybe a granddad. Maybe it was a sibling. Maybe it was your own child who labored faithfully in the Lord. But we want to part, take some time to remember them. So if you don't mind, family, would you bow with us? Oh, Father, even on this morning, as we reflect and reminisce on those we love who truly loved us and love you. Father, we miss them every day. We miss their smiles, their warm embrace. We miss the conversations, Lord. We miss the laughter, God. We just miss them, Lord. But, Father, we are confident to know that they rest in heaven with you. And we just want to pause for a moment, Lord, to let you know we love you. And you are everything. Thank you for keeping us through the pain, the heartache. Thank you for keeping us through all the storms. And then, Father, we pray that as families continue to heal, that, God, you would give them the strength, God, to just take one day at a time. And God, if one day at a time is too much, let him just take hour by hour, Lord. And if that's a little too much, God, they can go minute by minute or moment by moment. Give them what they need, Master. Please, Jesus. And at the same time, God, we lift up those who are sick and suffering right now those in their homes, those even in this house that are going through storms of many kinds. Father, would you touch? God, would you heal? 
Father, would you restore? God, would you reconcile? Please, Master, those in the hospital, those who are in surgery, those who, God, are in ICU, wherever they are, Master, we still believe we're living in a land where miracles are performed. Continue to touch, Lord. Continue, Master. Now, Father, would you teach us now in our state of remembering those who labored amongst us. It's in Jesus' powerful name we pray. And all in the house can say amen. And say amen again. And amen. But family, we thank God that you're in the service today. I want to thank those who might be visiting for the first time today or second time. We want you to know we're so glad that you chose to worship with us today. And just like any other day, please know that we appreciate you being in this house. And inside this bulletin that you receive, there's a place on the inside to the right where you can fill out some basic information and tear it off as best you know how. And during our time of offering, just place it in the offertorial basket. And the Lord will give you a call. I will give you a call before 10 p.m. tonight just to say thank you at least and to answer any questions you might have. But please, please know that you're welcome in God's house. Family, our scriptures is on the back side. It's first as Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 through verse 18. And in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, let's read together starting at verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and admonish you, and to regard them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we exalt you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone, and see to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good from one another and for all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58 family, therefore my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his word. Family, in times like these, it's vitally important that we do some self-reflecting. All of us, every one of us, we have an expiration date. Whether you believe it or not, you do have an expiration date. Nobody live on this side forever. We're going to make transition at some point in life. And I can testify that nobody is actually ready to just make that transition. But it's going to happen in some form or fashion in our future. We don't know the time, we don't know the date, or the hour that the Lord is going to call us home. But would it be wonderful when God finally called us home that people on this side that we leave behind still have good memories about us when we're no longer here. Well, Apostle Paul is speaking to the church and the body of Christ from time to time need to be reminded of a few simple things about how God works. God is not concerned about what you want. It's what he has already commanded that we have to find ourselves being obedient to. 
And in the body of Christ, God is the head of all. Christ is the savior of the entire world. The Holy Ghost is the comforter provided by the Spirit of God to help us through these difficult days. And when he come down to the church, the church have biblical order. And biblical order mean that we take precedent over anything and anybody that's in the world because every knee have to bow before the Lord Jesus. And every tongue will eventually confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now we often hear it during Christmas season that only what we do for Christ will last. And we realize our salvation in Christ was to do a good works. The only reason that God left us here after salvation is that we might do a good works. And so when Paul speaks, he speaks from the platform that we as believers have a responsibility to serve and to fulfill the very mission that God has called for you and I to fulfill. Today is a special day, and as I shared with the family a year ago on the death, tra the tragic death of Dr. Latanya Earl, that we will always remember her labor in the Lord at Bethel's family. 16 years of sowing her life, her gifts, her skills in ministry. And you can tell when a person is doing it because of God and when they're doing it because of themselves, when they're doing it because of God, even that which they draw remains. Some of you don't realize the impact of what Dr. Earl had on this church. You might have a glimpse of understanding, but let me hear share something. Over a hundred people were brought to this church just through a family, just because she was here. And even when God called her tragically home, her family did not scatter. They stayed here. They served, they stepped up to the plate, they began to do the work of the ministry because the example had already been given. So often I see family members who die, they stop coming because the death of a husband, the death of a wife, the death of a child, they somehow, the reason why they were here, it wasn't for Jesus. But when you do things from your heart, when you labor in the Lord, that's why there's a few things that we want to look at because it's very profound. Verse 11, I didn't give it to you in scripture, but it is. It says we have a responsibility to lift each other up, to encourage each other. And this is what the body of Christ have to be doing. It can't be about you. It can't be about me. It has to be about the body of Christ. And we have to say, God, we're your instruments. We're your vessels. Use us however you want to use us. And our job is to lift each other up. Why is it so important? Because we only have one adversary. We only have one adversary. The church only have one adversary. And that's Satan himself. But sometimes the spirit of the demonic forces get into Christians and make them turn on one another. And then we stop lifting each other up. We stop encouraging each other along this journey. And we become in conflict and we become at war with one another. At the same time, we're missing out on what we're supposed to be doing. So Paul says right here, it's very important that we encourage one another. And then he says this, he says, listen, now I tell you, brothers and sisters, listen, give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and also who admonishes you. In other words, those who work hard, those who serve. Those prayer warriors, those choir members, those ushers, those greeters, Sunday school teachers, those who preach the gospel, those who are in the parking lot. He says, listen, you've got to give them recognition, acknowledge their labor, acknowledge their work, acknowledge their sacrifices. But we have been so conditioned, and please excuse me this morning, because we come from an Afrocentric history, we have been so conditioned to be hypnotized and sometimes doctrinalized and hating on one another. 
Instead of admonishing and lifting and building and encouraging and being thankful and grateful that God has gifted us in such a way that we are able to be used because jealousy sets in. But he says we have a responsibility to listen, give recognition to those who work hard among you. I am so proud of the choir that is here. So proud of the praise team that is here. They labored all through 2020. In the midst of the pandemic, they labored in the Lord. They showed up every week to serve in some form or fashion. Proud of the band, the choir members, the, the musicians. They showed up to say, Lord, however you want to use me. I, I know this is a difficult season, but God, I still want to be used. The ushers and the greeters who showed up, the Sunday school teachers who showed up. It's a blessing, family, because the body of Christ, we are God's agent. So we have to recognize those gifts, re recognize their service. And I know it's hard for some that sit back and make excuses on why you don't do what you're supposed to be doing, but don't you know you need to be remembered? And that's why I tell people in my journey, all I'm trying to do is just finish well. I don't know the day nor the hour when the Lord is going to call me home. I'm just trying to finish well. I don't stop and start, stop and start. I don't stop and start. I don't stop and start. I just go. Because that's what the Great Commission told me to do, to go and to do. And that's what people like Dr. Latanya Earl did. She would labor in the Lord as gifted as she was. She worked hard. Many worked hard. Even when she was tired and she was weary, she would still get up and go. Not having enough sleep, she'd travel anywhere. She would go. And sometimes God give you examples right in your presence, but you still can't get it. If you remember for those who were here, she had a pastoral funeral. She didn't have a regular church member funeral. Do you remember how many pastors was on this pulpit? That's the kind of impact that God want all of us to have in such a way that we bless the body, the kingdom of God, even pastors that, amen, a church down the road would know your service even by how you usher. Even by how you greet people, how you share your faith and how you serve, you'll be known around the city. The other thing that you got to realize when you are working and you're, amen, busy, you realize that your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. Because God records every work, every action, every sacrifice. God records everyone. And sometimes we have to encourage people, as the Bible says, because we have a charge. God has placed, listen, God has placed leaders over you to encourage you, but also to admonish you. And sometimes correct you. And this is where most of us get a little shaky. We don't want to be corrected. You know, it's just personal with me. I don't know how. 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 I don't know how a preacher who get paid from the church can stay at home and still get paid for a salary. I don't know. That's why I have to show up every week. I have to be here every Sunday because, listen, when I get my paycheck, I can sleep at night because I work for it, Pastor Holman. And you can stay home so long, you get okay, comfortable staying home. And guess what happened? It's a brand new habit. You never go to church again. And so many have settled into collecting that online money that they want not going to church. That's why the church still closed. But I don't know.
don't know about you, when I went to work in my circle of job, there was no such thing as not going to work because if I'm going to get paid, I have to go to work. Why not? Amen. Remember that the labor and the law, the work that we do for the kingdom is paramount compared to all the other works we've ever done in our lives. So we have to begin to charge people. When you charge them like that, they get mad, they get angry. Even some pastors, some men that I have raised in the ministry. I had to check them. You didn't learn staying home from me. And one thing about Pastor August, if I see a sign of cowardness in your eyes, if I see a spirit of fear in your spirit, and I'm not talking about y'all, I'm talking about the called men who stand behind the sacred desk and say they've been called to lead people. You see, you can't lead people at your house. You got to lead people at God's house where we come together. And when we admonish them, that's why at times it's not always popular to be a leader. Because people want you to do what's comfortable for them, not what's popular with God. And that's why we have to correct. That's why we got to begin to realize. And that's why the body of Christ says in Hebrew 13 and 7, you ought to obey your leaders. So when you find yourself walking in obedience, the leader lead with confidence to take you farther than you've ever been. But it says when you don't, Respect to obey your leaders is not going to go very well for you. And you looked at the choir. You looked at Dr. Earl's labor in service. The choir is still intact. The music is still going forward. The generation of praise choir. And guess what God has done? God has added new talent. Nobody have a monopoly on the choir. It belongs to God. It always have. If you don't want to sing, that's no problem. God's going to send some singers in here. Come on, Asher. You, you, know, you don't have to usher no more. Don't worry about that. God's going to send some more ushers in here. God will never, ever sit back and let his church be ashamed or be a stain in the world's view. If you think you're trying to hold on to something, you're going to lose it. That's why it's important, family. I'm almost done because I know everybody don't like these kind of messages, but you need to be faithful in ministry. That's why he says in verse 14, and urge you, brothers and sisters, not to be idle. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Listen, no one can be idle. Sitting around, waiting, when the world is going to hell in the handbasket. The church lives, the people live, and your service, your sacrifice, your dedication, we have a responsibility. So we got to challenge those who are idle. We got to challenge those who are even weak. We got to encourage them. And this, and this is the, one of the things that God revealed to me. If you're scared, say you're scared. I, I can accept that. If you're scared, say you're scared. I can handle that. Then I'll put a little bit more prayer and protection around you. But don't, hey man, talk all that noise. Talk about how bold you are, but you're at home. If you're scared, you're scared. If the stuff in the land has put fear in your heart, say that's where it is. Don't be trying to spiritualize stuff. We got to encourage the timid because the church suffered persecution and some people just need, amen, some encouragement because the persecution and the criticism that come to Christians, especially in times like this, is, amen, detrimental to their health. We got to encourage people. And when it says help the weak, now the weak is not those who profess to be strong. The weak are those who are new in Christ. 
those who are trying to figure out all this stuff, those who just came to Christ last week, but the church been closed for nine months, what do we do? There's a lot of weak Christians in the body, not sick Christians, weak Christians. Got to encourage them to be strong. And then we got to also take a point to be patient. And that's where the ground levels. We have to be patient with those because God is patient with us. And then he gets down here and Paul says, listen, we got to learn to rejoice always. In every circumstance, in any situation, we got to give thanks to God because it's his will. Now, a lot of people say, you know, I don't thank God for 2020. 2020 messed me up. I couldn't travel. Couldn't go nowhere. Folks around me getting sick. I even had a battle of COVID. It wasn't a good year. But how are you going to stand before God and tell him that because what you went through, you don't feel a need to give thanks in all circumstances? You see, you have to give thanks in all circumstances. When you're up or whether you're down. If you're in or whether you're out. If you're sick or whether you're well. You must give thanks to God in all circumstances. Don't you know every breath that you take belongs to God? Every eye you can see out of belongs to him. There is nothing you brought to the table. You brought nothing into this world and you can't take nothing when you leave. And everything that you have, God provided it for you. God made a way for you. God kept you through the pandemic. It's not because you quarantine, amen, that you're still here. You're still here because God protected you. God built a shield around you. And even the mere fact that COVID-19 have devastated so many people's lives, we don't undermine that, but the reality of it is we're still here only because God so deemed that we would. So you got to give thanks. And I know it's hard for people who are not connected to spiritual things to understand why do I give thanks for cancer? Why would I give thanks for heartaches, heart condition. Why would I give a thank for having this tumor in my head? Why would I give thanks that I have to take radiation and chemotherapy and, and go through all of dialysis? Why am I giving thanks? Do you not know? Have you not heard? You're that disconnected from the word that Job said that man born of a woman is only of a few days. And these days are filled with so much trouble. So let me just give you my little recipe. Number one, I don't sweat nothing. And I don't major in minor things. And I've learned that as long as there's a little breath in my body, I'm not at 100 because you can't be 662 years old and be at 100. You can't even be 42 and be at 100. You might not even be 22 and be at 100. And so if I'm at 62 and I'm not at 100, but if I'm about 81, I'm still good. If I can get up every morning and put my own clothes on and remember my name, I'm good. If I can fix me a little something to eat because I got a roof over my head, I'm telling you, I'm good. If I didn't have to walk in the cold and the nakedness this morning, got some coat, got some clothes, got something to warm me up, I'm good. Come on now, say amen. You see, it's the very thing that most people don't give thanks for, don't appreciate, but I appreciate everything. I looked around my home and my wife was still good. I didn't get a call in the midnight hour saying my son is over here, my grandson is over here, my granddaughter is over here. The phone did not ring. I did not have to go to a hospital last night. I'm trying to tell you, it's not about what you think it is. You ought to give thanks in all circumstances. 
Because my God that I serve can move at any given time and he can move, amen, mountains out of your way, obstacles out of your way, and there's nothing that Satan can throw at you that God can't block, that God can't shield away from you. If I told you the truth, God has kept many things from touching your life. So when we talk about giving thanks in all circumstances, but he also said something else in here. He said you need to also pray. Constantly. Praying for healing. And as not a day go by, we don't pray. Prayer is not just when you're in trouble. Got to pray every day. I remember Dr. Latanya on, on the prayer line for consistency when we started the prayer line i want to make sure was that in 2019 near the end of 2019 as we prepare to go into 2020 i think that that's what it was uh no maybe 18. it's not it's 2018 we started the prayer line and we started the prayer line and we're still praying even as of last night every night since the latter part of 2018, when Dr. Earl was alive, she was on the prayer line. I mean, and she had all them gadgets. Sometimes you could hear, sometimes she'd faint in and out, but she'd still be praying. Lord, have mercy. You see, you've got to pray constantly and consistently, not about your will, but about his will. And when Dr. Earl prayed, if you ever got a chance to hear her pray, she prayed about everything and everybody, prayed about her family, and she was one. She was a prayer warrior. If you just listen to the prayers, you got to pray. you got to develop a prayer life because, listen, it's important to have a prayer life. Pray without ceasing. And so your rejoicing would be all that God wanted to be. And that's when Paul closes out in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. He says, be ye steadfast, immovable, always finish it, abounding in the works of the Lord. Because he says right here, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Be ye there steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because you know your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Family, listen to me. If you thought 2020 was a terrible year, you haven't seen nothing yet. We're still living in a land, in a country that wholeheartedly don't believe in God. God has blessed this country. I don't know if you ever step out of America and just look at it. You ought to try that sometime. A land flowing with milk and honey. We have an abundance. We are the greatest nation in the world. But yet we're the most selfish the most self-centered, the most arrogant nation in the world. In a place like America, why do we have homelessness? 
when there's tens of thousands of vacant homes and apartments all over the place. Why do anybody need to go to bed hungry? When we have storehouses filled with so much. God is not through dealing with America. I'm just letting you know if you thought 2020 was something, you ain't seen nothing yet. But I want to encourage you to do what I do. I'm just going to get up every morning and say, Lord, I don't know much. I'm not the sharpest pencil in the bunch, but however you want to use me, I make myself available. I'm not the best preacher, teacher, hooper, singer. You know, I, I, I sing a little bit, but I, you know, I'm not the best. <laughs> but I'm going to do whatever it is that God called for me to do. And I'm going to do it to the best of my abilities. And I just want you to do the same. Whatever it is that God has called for you to do, just do it to the best of your abilities. Because at the end of the day, you just want to hear him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servants. You've been faithful over a few things. Come now. I make you ruler over many things. Family, my prayer is this, and please hear my heart. I would like for all of you to have the kind of homegoing celebration that Dr. Latanya Earl family experienced. That's my prayer for all of you, that the body of Christ will show up. People will come from around this city, outside of this state, to come and celebrate your life living. The stage will be filled with people and preachers who know or heard about your labor and your service. Then Pastor August won't have to put a time limit on how long we're going to be in here. We can just let the Lord have his way. I want you to know all of you deserve to have a pastoral funeral. Because your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So work the work of him who sent you while it is day. Night's coming when no man can work. And finally, I'll say this. You know how it is when you were learning to ride a bicycle? I think it took me, I think probably two weeks. Well, it, it took me that long because I didn't have a bike. <laughs> so I had to wait for somebody to, you know, stop riding their bike. <laughs> and I fell a lot. I, I, it's, when I got on the bicycle, it seemed like I see the tree, but I just can't turn. <laughs> but after a while, I got it. Sometimes when you fall from whatever you're supposed to be doing, just get up, get back in place, and start paddling again. Because it's not how you start that matters. My brothers and sisters, it's about how you finish. And remember I shared with you a while back, you're not competing or racing against anybody, the only thing you're racing against is time. So when you do what God has called for you to do and you finish your race, then he shall say to you and to me, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come now. I make you rulers over many things. So let's labor 
while we have time. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the servants in the body of Christ. Thank you, God, for just honoring us today with your presence and your power. And we just pray for the body of Christ, God, that we will all get back to do what you've called for us to do. And I'm praying, God, that there will be a mighty, mighty reunion in due time when all of the saints from the four winds of the earth would come together to celebrate who you are. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your protection, O oh Lord. And then on the sound of my voice, if there's a man or woman who find themselves, God, desiring to connect with you here at Bethel's family, let them know, God, the doors are now open, not only for the fellowship of the body, but, God, the membership of salvation, so they can spend eternity, God, with you in heaven and even if they've already have made that commitment but looking for a church home a fellowship a body of believers who truly believe that Jesus is coming back let them know God that Bethel's family we're not perfect but let them know God we strive to be faithful every single day so draw them by your spirit oh God and then, Father, I pray as we prepare to give and to sow and to sacrifice that you receive, God, our whole tithes, our offerings, our sacrificial gifts, God, that comes from the heart and hands of your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. My brother, my sister, I know this is a season where uh, we're going to go deeper and I'm going to tell you, we're going places where we haven't been before. And if you're looking to go farther down the road in the kingdom of God, Bethel's family is just getting started. Yeah, we'll be about 27, 28 years old in an, another month or so. But we're just getting started on the work that God has us to do. If you've been searching and seeking for a church home, looking to surrender your life to Christ, these are the new members invitation conference and i tell you i am grateful i'm so thankful for these people who commit themselves to this ministry they're here to serve and i commend you for your labor and for your service thank you all so very much but they're here to pray for you they're here to give you some guidance lead you into christ if that's what it takes and give you the spirit and the opportunity to get acclimated to what we do here at Bethel's family. So they're here. And even if you don't walk the aisles, they're in room, room 121. Upon the benediction of our service, you can definitely go in that room and they will pray for you. If you're joining by Christian experience, they will take care of that as well. If you uh, accepting Christ for the first time, they will lead you through the sinner's prayer and they will get you connected to the next new member's orientation and they will answer any questions that you might have. This is the new member's invitation counseling team. Thank you all so much for your labor and for your service. Now they're here all day long. So, you know, just get with them and they'll receive you. I'm going to ask our deacons to come forward. And today we also have individuals celebrating birthdays today. I know we have Brother Thomas Caldwell and Sanitra Davis celebrating birthdays on their February 14th. So if you're in the service, we tell you happy birthday today and many others who might be celebrating birthdays. And I dare not forget that tomorrow... Uh, during this freeze out, uh, Kirk Cole will be celebrating a birthday. Stand up, Brother Kirk. That's him right there. Brother Kirk texts me a hundred times <laughs> to make sure that I know and you know that tomorrow is Kirk Cole's birthday. 
How old are you? How old are you going to be? 21? Praise the Lord. Happy birthday to you in advance, man. I might throw something in your direction in due time. Amen? But happy birthday to you. You happy? You feel better? Praise the Lord. Amen. While the deacons take care of our time of giving family, uh, let me also be very, very serious with you. When it comes down to this inclement weather that's coming in, please do not play games with this weather. It's been 30 plus years since we had a blast like this. In 1989, we were in Missouri City, since August 9, and just about every home in that community, we were not prepared for it. I don't think we watched the news at all and all the pipes burst in most of the homes in Missouri City because all of our pipes are in the attic. So please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure you got stuff wrapped around, your pipes wrapped around. Make sure, you know, plants is okay. I can always replace the plants and that kind of stuff. But make sure you wrap those pipes. Please make sure you do that. The other thing I want you to know, if you haven't been to the store to take care of a few things, uh, make sure you do those kind of things because it's vitally important uh, overall uh, that you do that. There will be uh, no, the office is going to be closed tomorrow for sure and probably on Tuesday if, it, if the road is permissible. We might slide in here on Wednesday, but we're not going to put anybody, our staff, or the office, and you should neither, anybody on these hazardous roads because nobody can drive on ice. Amen? And we haven't had this in a long time, so, uh, you know, get your food together, knuckle in, and watch movies for a couple of days. Enjoy your family. Put your Christmas tree up. and. <laughs> I mean, you know, the cold front just came a month and a half late. But enjoy your family. But do not allow yourself to be in this inclement weather. Please, sir, please, ma'am, this is serious business. This is a serious, serious winter blast coming this way. And it'll start tonight later on, but take care of that. So um, uh, men's ministry will be on Zoom or be online through Facebook Live tomorrow. Women's ministry going to do the same thing, similar on Zoom, or they'll be uh, for, for Tuesday. And Wednesday will probably be similar the same, but we're not going to put anybody in harm's way. Amen? Heavenly hands will be closed. BCA is closed for Monday and Tuesday. They'll reevaluate things on, third, on Wednesday, but it might be, you know, Wednesday or Thursday, but the next best day honestly looking at saturday will be the next best day when we're above freezes because once we go to tomorrow night it's going to stay based on what i saw under 32 degrees for five consecutive days so please ma'am don't play with this amen now you sisters who have those fur coats and you haven't had a chance to use them i want you to go home as soon as you leave here and get your fur coat out and then go ahead and go to H-E-B and do your shopping, wear your fur coat. <laughs> so you can say you wore it, amen? Amen. Is there anything else, Pastor Lee, Pastor Holman, anything else? Pastor Ford, anything else? Uh, Sister Madeline, anything else? I want to make sure I'm, I'm right. Anybody have anything else we need to know? Now, family, we are also doing everything we can to make sure uh, we keep the building safe. So uh, we bought some machines and we're going to get everybody out of this building because these machines, they will put a big fog in the air to sanitize the whole building. We invested, I think, $7,000 in these things because I want to make sure that people know when they come in here, we are taking responsibility to make sure we sanitize the entire room. It will happen after this, this service and then we'll do it again after the 9 o'clock service. So we're trying to make sure everybody stays safe. But keep your masks on, family. Please do that. And know that our best days is still ahead of us. Amen? Let us go ahead and stand. Oh! 
grace of God, the sweetness of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with all of us here until we all come together again. Let us all sing. Amen. God bless you, family. Family, be very, very careful. Please, ma'am, please, sir, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Chapter.